So how are we able to achieve the separation of one of the two side bands? That is simply done by providing the phase shifts of 90 degree to every tongue. To the upper side band, we provide the phase shift of 90 degree in both the cases. So it adds up to twice cos omega c plus omega m. But to the lower side band, we are providing the phase shift of plus 90 in the upper case and minus 90 in the lower case. So when you add them, because the total phase difference is 180 degree, their sum will turn out to be zero. And how are we able to achieve this uh, different phase shifts? It's because of the, the very specific structure of phase values that we have uh, on this uh, input side. Hence, this method is called phase shift method because we are uh, phase shifting the carrier and the modulating signal and then giving it to the two balance modulators that we have. The whole advantage of using this method is to remove the need of uh, filter design. We are not using filter anywhere. But this doesn't come free of cost. There is a new drawback in the phase shift method. Let us discuss what is the drawback. If you observe in phase shift method, we have to use a block which is called AF wide band 90 degree phase shifter. Now, why is it called wide band? Because the input to this block is nothing but my modulating signal M of T, which we have taken as cos of omega MT. But as I told you, just for the simplicity, we consider it to be a single frequency signal. In practice, it will contain all the frequencies from 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz. Hence, you need to provide phase shift not just to single frequency, but to a range of frequencies. Now let us quickly discuss how to provide a phase shift to any input signal. How do we design a phase shifter in simple words? If my input frequency is let's say cos 2 pi f1 t, then my output will be cos 2 pi f1 t plus phi. This extra phase shift of phi is provided by this phase shifter block. And very famously used phase shifter block is nothing but RC network. We know that RC circuit can provide the phase shift of any desired value based on the values of R and C that we have chosen. If I take a very simple RC circuit, let us say this is my RC circuit. This will be the input here, R and C. And when you take output from this RC circuit, then output signal will be having the phase difference with respect to the input signal of phi and this phi as per the analysis of RC circuit we know that turns out to be tan inverse of xc by r. So we can obtain the phase difference of tan inverse of xc by r where we all know that xc is nothing but 1 upon 2 pi fc into r where f is nothing but the input frequency. So whatever is the input frequency that will be phase shifted by the value phi and you can see the phase shift depends upon the values of input frequency, capacitor and resistor values. So I repeat the phase shift that we need to provide will be 10 inverse of 1 upon 2 pi f c into r. Now if my frequency is constant then I can use constant values of r and c and get the desired phase shift which in our case is of 90 degree. But if my frequency is changing and if I want to keep the phase shift constant, then I'll have to also change either of R and C so that my denominator remains constant and hence my phase shift remains constant. Because we want constant phase shift of 90 degree in our case and because the input frequency will keep on changing from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. I'll have to change either R or C. We decide to change C, we keep R constant. So every time frequency cha changes, the capacitor of RC circuit will also be changed so that FC remains constant. And if FC is constant, I can provide the constant phase shift of 90 degree. Now how to get variable capacitance? There are devices like Varactor diode which provides variable capacitance. But larger the range of frequencies over which the constant phase shift is to be provided, we will need larger range over which the capacitor should change. Because the range of frequency from 20 Hz to 20 kHz is large enough, it is very difficult to obtain a desired variable capacitor device which will provide the change in capacitance over a large range. And that 
becomes the drawback of the phase shift method. The drawback, I repeat, is that we need a phase shifter which provides a constant phase shift of 90 degree to a range of frequencies. And for this, we need to use a variable capacitance device in a phase shifter circuit, which could be an RC circuit. Now, this is another problem. In order to avoid filter from the circuit, we have introduced a phase shifter and this phase shifter generates another problem. So now we are looking for a solution in which say we do not require a filter to be used or to be designed at high frequency because that's the main problem. And we do not require a phase shifter that has to provide phase shift to a range of frequencies. Will there be any problem with this particular phase shifter that we have here? No, because this phase shifter has to sh phase shift a single frequency signal, which is nothing but the carrier signal. Carrier signal is single frequency. To provide 90 degree phase shift to a single frequency FC will be very simple. I will need R and C of constant values because F also remains constant in this case equal to FC. So the main problem is this phase shifter. So I repeat, we don't want two things in my block diagram. The first thing is that I don't want to use filter to be designed at high frequency. And the second, I don't want to use phase shifter that needs to provide phase shift to a range of frequencies. Both these things will be avoided in the third method that we are going to discuss about SSB generation.